During the 1950s and 60s, the whole United States underwent major changes. These changes were known as urban renewal projects that were controlled and funded by the U.S. government. Urban renewal is the planning philosophy of destroying areas that had been dilapidated, blighted, and sometimes crime-ridden with the intention of replacing them and creating functional and thriving communities. This new process of rebuilding cities across the country all started with the passing of the Housing Act of 1949. The Housing Act of 1949 was put in place to help revive cities that were on the decline. Funds were put in place to help cities clear out slums and blooded areas and allow them to have the resources to support the cost of buying, clearing, and rebuilding these areas. Urban renewal projects started all over the country, but were under the criticism of many, having the opinion that these projects were doing more harm than good. This was because to be able to rebuild these slums and blighted areas, you had to clear out the residents that were living in those current housing units and forcing them to relocate. Implementation of urban renewal projects in Garden Valley demonstrates an economic significance because it caused many poor residents living in downtown Cleveland to relocate to surrounding urban renewal projects while downtown was being redeveloped. During the Great Depression, many of the immigrants located around Cleveland in the workforce were greatly suffering. These people included African American, Hungarian, Czech, Slavic, Polish, and Irish immigrants. They had no place to go when they lost their jobs, so they relocated into the area of Kingsbury Run and built temporary shanty towns that became their new communities. This area was known for their landfills and unattractive surroundings due to the rundown industrial factories surrounding the area. Along with these living conditions, there were a string of homicides in the area known as the Torso Murders, which were never solved. These murders caused various amounts of fear and chaos around the area, followed by destruction of some of the shanty homes by local officials trying to solve these homicides. These kinds of conditions were part of some of the concerns surrounding the urban renewal project of Garden Valley, and as well as if the area was well suited for the project. The three key figures that led the project were the director of the Cleveland Municipal Housing Authority, Ernest Bowen, Cleveland's Mayor Anthony Silbrizi, and Cleveland's Planning Commission Director, James Lister. Together, these three made the Garden Valley Urban Renewal Project possible. Lister hired Alan Jacobs to help with the planning of Garden Valley. Jacobs' job included surveying the land that he was about to use for the Urban Renewal Project and coming up with a general layout of how the community would be laid out with buildings, roads, parks, and etc. The mission for this project was to provide a comforting community for the people who are being displaced out of inner city Cleveland. The CMHA is quoted as saying they envisioned a racial mix of families living side by side and moving from one development into the other as their economic conditions required it. They wanted this project to provide housing for the African Americans who are not able to find housing very easily, and for them to live in close proximity with white people that could also be moving out of the city. The planners of Garden Valley prided themselves on the fact that they were going to provide public housing to white and black residents. Even with all of the controversy over this concept of integration, the housing did in fact have several white families moving into the housing, even though they did not stay in the area for long. Garden Valley became the home to hundreds of families that moved to the area from inner city Cleveland due to urban renewal projects that were about to begin. Garden Valley's initial building had 88 units in a three-story walk-up with a mortgage that amounted to $867,000. The Cleveland Development Foundation sponsored the first Garden Valley building. The redevelopment of Garden Valley added 396 units to a two- and three-story building. This development amounted 
a mortgage that costs $3,868,600, which was sponsored by the Garden Valley Housing Association. They displaced a majority of people who were occupying the areas that were considered slums or blighted areas in order to do this. These people moved and settled into Garden Valley, which due to the fact that most of them were very poor due to losing their jobs in the city, caused Garden Valley to slowly turn into a slum itself. The area had issues with the surrounding industrial areas still using places around the newly built apartment as dumping grounds for their trash disposal. This caused severe issues with the residents who had concerns about the health and safety of their families, especially their children. At this point in time, many people all over the country were living in very poorly maintained housing complexes. These housing units were not being taken care of by the landlords, and when it came to the point where the city officials declared some areas in various cities as slums or blighted areas, they gave up all hope in trying to make the living arrangements better because that kind of reputation would never really go away unless they spent massive amounts of money. This caused many people to move out of the city due to unsuitable living conditions. Many others were forced to pack up all of their belongings and move out of their houses or apartments to other locations that were very difficult for many to find. These new locations were difficult to find because many of the available units for rent were not being rented out to African Americans, which left many of them to move completely out of the city into some suburbs. Garden Valley was one of the first urban renewal projects to be built for the intent of the people being displaced from inner city Cleveland. There were a lot of hopes for Garden Valley and it creating a new community to bring blacks and whites together, but this caused some interruption in the planning because some of the sponsors did not want Garden Valley to have a mixed community. Eventually, the project got enough funds to continue with the project and the units were built. Because many of the families that were moving into these new units were poor immigrants, the newly renovated apartment buildings and surrounding areas soon became very similar to the slums and blighted areas that they had just moved out of. As you can see, many people were very weary of the government-run urban renewal projects around the country. Many of the projects were located inside major cities and required the removal of thousands of residents that were living within those areas. The displacement of many of these people caused even bigger problems of overcrowded cities and people becoming homeless. With the help of projects like Garden Valley, it gave those people a place to live outside of the city in new units that had better standard of living than the units they had been living in while in the city. Garden Valley, to an extent, was a successful urban renewal project since it is still serving its purpose of housing people in that area. Garden Valley is not as well kept and under major financial troubles, even if the buildings are still standing and holding a purpose. Garden Valley is an example of a failed urban renewal project because of the fact that they had to be redeveloped not many years after it was initially built. You have a nice beer. Y'all never come from town and country. Make sure you're strong and fit.